Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. And today I'm going to show you uh, the inside of the gearbox in the LeBlanc, LeBlanc Regal 19 inch lathe to show you uh, what I'm up against to get the high speed gear going. So, looking in here, um, so that back. Uh, rod here that's the uh, directly off the <clears throat> pulley comes through this goes this is the counter shaft for the uh, spindle that's uh, basically the back gear that's the low speed <coughs> and that's the high speed this here there's some more gears down there sorry about the glare there there you can see them that's uh, these two handles. This reverses the feeds. And this is fine or coarse for the uh, gearbox. So, so you guys can see it here. Yeah, right there. See that gap right there? That trying to get a better angle right there that's our missing tooth um, every other tooth in here is fine I've rolled this and look, inspected everything else in it that's the only damage I see um, the only thing that that controls is the very highest speed in high and what would be the very highest speed in low and that's not such a big deal to me. But the high speed would be nice to have. So that one tooth there is basically affecting a quarter of the speed of the machine. You know, one of the high speeds and high, one of the, the highest speed and low. So the way this looks like it's constructed, there's the shift lever in there. Let me get some more light in there. I do it without flooding everything out. That's better. This cluster looks to be one piece that is uh, a press fit onto this shaft. And these two gears look the same. Like this is one piece press fit over a central shaft. So. I could uh, remove these two gears, but as you can see, let me see if I can get a better angle, they don't leave you a lot of room for doing repair in there. My original intention was to braze the gap, you know, fill it full braze, make a, obviously you can't get a gear cutter in there. So I was going to cut a profile tool. Uh, tool bit and broach it being it's the uh, the high speed gear I just I don't know about that um, there's gonna be quite a bit of torque on it especially when you're cutting so I I'm having uh, second thoughts about that um, I'm gonna probably leave it for now you know, the lathe is fully operational. Well, not fully operational, but it's usable without that. And probably for a couple months, I'll keep an eye on eBay, um, you know, sites like that. See if one comes up. I highly doubt one will come up, but, you know, you never know. Um, another option I had, or I'm thinking about, is checking the thicknesses of this be you know, this is quite a bit sorry about the lighting it's just it's hard to get proper lighting inside here this is pretty thick and it's the same thickness on the other side is to turn the gear off of it okay completely cut it smooth um off of this buy a gear with the same 
you know, dimetral pitch and tooth count and all that stuff. Bore it out and, you know, interference fit it onto that, this part. Um, that's still an option. There's uh, enough meat to do there. There's about, oh, a hundred thou, maybe a hundred and fifty thou. I'll have to do some more measuring to see about going that option. But that is an option, and that would probably be easier and better. Um, so that's one more thing to keep in mind there. But for the meantime, I'll just, uh, I don't turn a lot of big things fast in here. I do on the, the Tida is a, it's a gap bed lathe. So I can actually fit a, uh, ooh, a 20 inch chuck in there. Obviously the gap bed, you know, when it comes to here so obviously I can't have like a big pump impeller or something in there so I can kind of get away with some bigger stuff on the Tida but so the plan is for now is to wait a month or two see what I find and then we're going to I'm going to fix this I want this I want the lathe 100% functional. So, that is what we are up against. I don't think it's an impossible task. And it'll be a... You know, you see machines come up pretty often that have... Well, not pretty often, but these older ones that have a broken tooth or so. So, uh, you know, having some experience with uh, ways to fix it, you know, never hurts. So there's a little video showing you guys what's wrong with the lathe. Um, I did replace the plug and have ran it. And I'll run it for you guys tomorrow or Thursday. The customer with the pins uh, changed his mind on what he wanted the pins made out of. So I have to go get the steel for that. So you guys will see this guy run. Runs nice and quiet. Um... The Tide is a gearhead too, and it has this, it's always had this high pitch whine when it runs. This is just silent. Well, not silent, but, you know, marketably quieter. So, yeah. So, keep an eye open for videos on the uh, repair of this, and it'll be a pretty in depth video because that's gonna, getting that out of there is gonna pretty much require the disassembly of most of what's in here and that'd be a good time to clean everything and of course change the oil clean out the sump back there um i originally uh, the other day talked about changing pulleys and stuff if i was missing a couple speeds i i'd probably go that way but just being one speed um i don't i don't really want to do that Let's just fix it, make it right, and do what we have to do. So yeah, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.